Hello and welcome to Boxer Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta and my guest today, obviously the biggest of the big boys among India's IT czars and also the most silent. Subramanya <laughs> Ramadurai. Nice meeting you, Welcome Shekhar. to Boxer Talk. Thank you. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you're happy to be where you studied science many, many years ago, three dec four decades ago. Yes, I was here from 62 to 65. At or, the uh, Indian Institute, Institute of Science in Bangalore. Absolutely. It's one of the most picturesque parts in the country probably in the world, but then it brings you memories of how you grew up in the early 60s. Right. Uh, it was different in 1967-68 when you were here. Absolutely different. The number of students were much less. The number of girl students were very less. But I think the environment they have tried to retain was the same. The serenity and the conduciveness for education is absolutely visible. And for you, the environment has been the same in one way, from a Tata founded institute yes. to, a, to, to a Tata run company. Absolutely. When we grew up in school, I grew up in Delhi, Tata's as a job destination other than the Indian administrative service worked, was preached by my parents. So if you join the Tata's or if you join the admin, Indian administrative service, you made it. So I think that was ingrained. So when there was came IAS and there was TAS. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, you then have that unique position of having basically spent almost all your adulthood with the Tatas. Yes, I think from the 65 to 68, and then uh, for a year I worked with the Physical right. Research Laboratory, which was part yes. of the Indian Space Research right. Organization. Then went to the U.S. and then came back in '72, and I've been part of Tata's right then, right since then. And and this 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 trait of silence does it come from that a little bit, from being a part of? I Tata? think the yes, it's a very cultural uh, way you grow up in an institution, where you silently do the kind of things as a professional, and the outcomes are to be seen by the public at large including a satisfaction which comes from within, rather than projecting it repeatedly in all the forums. Having said that, as we went public in 2004, we need to be visible, that's what people tell me, and then you're trying to be a lot more visible, but initially it was the most difficult thing. But today it's a lot more comfortable. I believe, I believe your company even hired senior journalists <laughs> to, yes, to, yes. to teach teach people like you to open up to the media, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. We hired some very, very good journalists who have really added value to personally all of us as well as to the organization. Must be the only journalists in tech business. Yes. I think their takeaway is technology inputs and how does a technology company function, how does an average age profile of 23, today it's about 26 years, perform. And the dynamism and the intellectual challenges are what Did makes we, things happen. I mean, as a journalist, I'm very interested, not in a job at TCS, but <laughs> <laughs> very, very interested in this process whereby you decided that from being so silent, you had to come out in public domain, uh, maybe around the time of public. You tell me something about a debate and discussion. Yes. I think what uh, we prepared almost for a year to go into the public domain as a listed company. So what were the preparations that went in was all the internal preparations with regard to three years, financials, the entire submissions, the IPO document, which was going to be scrutinized by everybody who was going to be a potential all investor. All that was the easy part. That was the easy part. But the most difficult part was with regard to an image during the road shows where you're going to be meeting the analysts, you're going to be meeting the uh, media people, what you stood for, uh, how you communicated, what were the challenges. I think that was like coming from a completely shy organization, personally very shy, to becoming a very visible external. So when you change a mindset, when you change a behavior, you see a lot of internal conflicts which are coming out and then you'll have to... Some people say it's not necessary, we don't have to change like this. I think they said that, but a lot of the people said that you have to be a lot more smiling, you've got to be a lot more engaging, you've got to be a lot more beyond SNO, you have to answer a lot more than that. Uh, you were as close as shy 
ऐसे नीले कानी ऐसे नारायण मूर्ति ऐसे नहीं बन प्रेम जी फॉर दैट मैटर और वे इस पर्सनल रिश्ता है वे प्रो एस दे वर ओपन एंड फ्लैम्बोइंट एंड दे वर टॉकिंग ऑन ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ इश्यूज बियोंड देर ओन बिजनेसेस ह्यूज कंट्रास्ट आर यू ट्राइंग टू ब्रिज द गैप नाउ Yes, I think one is personally one is trying to bridge the gap. One has bridged the gap a lot, but more importantly, the younger people whom you are trying to mold for the future, right. whom you are trying to build for the future, are the ones who you want them to grow naturally, to be a lot more extrovert than introverts, a right. lot more uh, not shy but uh, be very very communicative. You don't want to, uh, them to go through the same turmoil you went through, and that's the biggest contribution. Why do you call it turmoil? I think it's a behavioral change because you are a complete professional where your uh, internal satisfaction or uh, communication comes from achievements which are there, which you recognize, which your bosses recognize, which your institution recognizes. And you want that to be recognized by the public at large because the number of owners of the company has increased. So that's what I call it as a turmoil. Because when you were going through this turmoil, as you put it, you were obviously very conscious of the fact that what the media and the rest of the country and, and the rest of the world is getting, uh, the view that they are getting of Indian IT sector, is view from one side of the fence, when, as they say, the bull is on the other, <laughs> isn't it? Because yes. you are so much bigger than others, from Infosys, Wipro. Mm -hmm. And yet that anonymity, was it self-denial? I don't think it was a self-denial of any sort. When we are not a listed company, the attention by the media or the newsprint was very minimal. Right. Even if you wanted to say something in terms of achievements, like a project you won or a project you delivered. But internally, you know, your, your younger people and others, was there some impatience that why are... Oh, yes. Why do Absolutely. my parents not know, my friends don't know? Absolutely. We feel, uh, the younger people felt that, how come we do all these things and nobody looks at us? Right. How come nobody wants to write about us? What is the problem with us? Even though we talk to the media, we talk to these people, why are they not communicating? But the only question we got asked, and I'm sure a lot of internal people must have asked is, why have we not gone public? Why have we not gone public earlier? Right. Right. And that's the only way to get the visibility. I think the other, the other question must have been also, why you were not sharing your wealth yes. with your staff I in, think in the manner that others were in, in IT business. I think some of the Tata value systems, the Rada culture, very, very few people really asked why is the wealth not being shared? Because the thing which we have always the said times is, are times are changing absolutely. Today, a youngster probably will say, what is in it for me? Right. Am I going to get a piece of the action? Can I spin off a company where I have an equity in this? I think the models have changed, times have changed, you've got to be sensitive to those. But I think quite a few of us who have lived together through the last 35 years, 20 years, 25 years, we always used to ask, am I doing the right things for the profession? And if that differentiator comes out that I'm making a difference to the profession personally as well as to the community, you made a difference. But, you, but you, you were almost an ideological brotherhood, isn't it? Yes. You, you can't expect the same from your young people. Now. Absolutely not so, but still, Quite a few of them get engaged, looking at you, looking at the way you have built yourself, that there is an opportunity for every single professional in the organization. Right. If at all anything, I don't belong to the family of Tatas. I have no relatives. But you have come up the way a normal professional should care. Entirely professional. You Absolutely know. professional. See, in, in that silent phase, or maybe it's because of the legacy of that silent phase, that we don't even know about many unusual and interesting things you've been doing. I've been hearing things you've done, for example, with Ferrari. Will you, yes. will you tell me a bit more? Let but, me tell but, you. But do remember that most of our viewers, uh, they, they may be smarter than me in this, but, <laughs> <laughs> but they are not tech people. Now, I'll give you a very, very simple, what is Ferrari? Ferrari is a car manufacturer right. who takes part uh, through um, racing car drivers in the Formula One circuit. And the important thing is the engineering that goes into a car in terms of speed, performance, real-time data acquisition, what is the tire pressure, what is the fuel uh, utilization, what is the air density. I think every single parameter that makes the car go so, so at you, the you fastest pace. So you basically produce software to 
that's to control okay. all this. You produce software to optimize, all to optimize all this more than anything else. One is to measure that, optimize it, and then tune it so that the driver has all of these things under control through a visual display.